La Trap Trappist Quadruple. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. This is going to be the last beer for the night. Well, fucking night, this has been... I just announced the lockdown for another month. But fireworks going off. Dogs are going mental. I've had a few beers and I'm just going to have this to round the night off. Now, I've tried a lot of the beers from the La Trap. Well, it's called La Trap. It's actually De Koenigshoven Brewery, who are based in the Netherlands believe it or not, but I've tried a few of their beers and they have all been absolutely amazing. So I'm hoping this quadruple is gonna be good as well. Now, I'm not really gonna go into the history of De Koenigshoven Brewery because I've covered it in the last videos that I've reviewed of the La Trap beers. All I will say is, just to give you a brief outline if you're just looking at this and haven't seen the other ones, they've been going since 1884. Obviously, they're called De Koenigshoven. That means, that literally translates to, well it, well, it has two meanings in Flemish. De Koenigshoven. Koenig means king, same as German. Hoven can mean hooves, like a horseshoe, but it can also mean a very large farm or a farmstead. And I think that's where it comes from. The, it's basically the king's farm or the king's, the king's land, basically. And that's where the name comes from. But the trap, really are good at what they do and i've seen quite a few people review their beers after i've reviewed them and I've, I've yet to see a bad review and to be honest if if i see someone review i know tastes are different but if i see someone who's saying this beer isn't good i would question whether they should be reviewing beer or not because so far all of theirs have been good now i don't know whether this quadruple is going to be good but I do like quadruples. They're a very acquired taste. They're certainly not session beers. I mean, that one is 10% and you cannot be fucking drinking 10% beers all night. You just end up absolutely fucking mullered. And they come in free 30 mil bottles, thankfully, because, you know, I've often pondered this when I've been sitting on the toilet. <laughs> what would happen if they started doing this lot in 500 mil cans? There would just be fucking carnage in the UK. We just, <laughs> we just, we just wouldn't be able to handle it. We would be holding our noses, drinking it, and just fucking going out and smashing the living shit out of everything. Anyway, enough about the UK's drinking habits. Let's investigate this beer. Three thirty mil bottle, ten percent ABV. Got to be careful with this shit. It's it's a quadruple. Now quadruples, they're basically the strongest you can get in the Belgian beer stakes, if you like. Uh, I've you know what? I can hardly see any of that shit, and it's not my dodgy Mr. Magoo eyes. Turn left to Captain's cabin. It's just everything is so fucking small. Let me give it a go. Ingredients, water, barley malt, glucose syrup, hops, and yeast. Now the glucose syrup would ring alarm bells with me, but that is quite a common ingredient in Belgian beer, and they get it right. They put, the, they put that in beer where it needs to be. You've got a couple of options. A lot of Belgian brewers will use candy sugar, which is like a caramelized type sugar, especially for brewing. It's unique to Belgian beer. You only really find it in Belgian beer. The British use invert sugar, which is, it's not the same, it's different. It's treated differently before it's put into the beer. Candy sugar 
it's treated differently before it's put into the beer but the fear is the same but it's basically the yeast will feed on that and it will give it a bottle fermentation so that's why they've put that in there glucose syrup it does give it quite a sweet sticky type flavor which i absolutely love i find it a lot in quads and i find it a lot in the doubles as well in the triples i sort of tend to find they've got a little bit more hop character in the triples because it's a lighter beer they're all top fermented so that's that's how it's done anyway and uh, yeah that is that is basically it so i've had this out of the fridge for a while it's just about the right temperature so let's get it into the glass Right, now these shouldn't be drunk ice cold. I see people reviewing these and they just get them straight out of the fridge. That's not the way you drink them. Here's the cap. What way does it go up? Oh yeah, it's that way. <laughs> it's got, they've got a Q on it. Normally they have a T, but they've got a Q on here for quadruple. So that will go in the collection. Let's get this into the glass. Oh, and these are always lively you will find that the carbonation in these is huge because it will re-ferment in the bottle and there will be some natural carbonation in this. And you've got to pour the whole lot in one go. Now, the trap have their own sort of chalice, but the basic principle is the same. Wide opening to let all that flavour, you know, sort of flood out with all the carbonation. And I can smell it from here. Oh, fucking hell. And that is super rich. Very sweet caramel malt. Big ethanol aromas. And there is. You can get some hop character. There's a, there is a bitterness and a sweetness that come through at the same time. And you do find that in a lot of quads. But it's it's just sweet caramel malt with that glucose. Little touch of hot bitterness and a fair bit of spirit alcohol. Now that head is not going to last long at 10%. So I want to try and drink this through the head. So let's stop gassing and let's get this down the hatch. That's a quad. Now these really are an acquired taste. I will say that. The sweetness and the spirit alcohol will put a lot of people off. Your average lager drinker will not be impressed with this. It will just be way, way too rich. But I absolutely love it. There is massive ethanol, spirit alcohol in this. That's just running all the way through it. You're getting a sweetness and you're getting a caramel malt that is, with that glucose syrup, it just makes it even sweeter. And it really does taste good. Now, as I say, the ethanol is massive in this. And at 10%, you know, you've got to expect that. Any 10% beer, you're going to get that. But the carbonation in this is quite, it's quite abrasive. But that does push that flavour around and it gives the aroma as well. And you need that. I think it's part of the drinking experience with a quad. You need to get that big aroma and that big because they are, they have got absolutely massive flavours in these. They are super rich. You should not be chugging this. You should be drinking this and savouring it. He says as he fucking gulps it down. There's 
It's also a little touch of fruit on this. I think what I'm perceiving, there is a little slight banana and clove coming from the yeast that's gone into this, which is, I think that's prevalent in all the uh, La Trappe beers. Well, in most Belgian beers, to be honest, they love that really big banana and clove esters that come out from the yeast. But there's also a little touch of spice on that as well. I get that on the finish and it's like a, a really subtle, you, I mean you really have to dig deep to get that, it's like a really subtle white pepper and it gives it a slight bit of this and I'm assuming that's coming from the hops that go into this. But really this isn't about hops at all, this is about spirit alcohol, it's about the malt and it's about the sweet sugary glucose syrup that's gone into this as well. And of course that's an adjunct, you know they have no Reinheitsgebot in Belgium, they will just throw whatever makes a beer taste good, orange peel, it's not in this but in, in some other beers they'll put orange peel, they'll put coriander, they'll put all type, sorts of spice in there, you know they really do go to town on on the beer I, in Belgium, it's not like the Germans where they're very strict on what goes in. I keep saying Belgian beer, but of course you got to remember this is from Holland or the Netherlands to give it its correct term, and it's it's copying a Belgian style. So I'm gonna sort of quote Belgium when I'm talking about this style, but it's really nice. I mean, it, that's that's what it looks like in the glass. It's like a very deep orange. Almost I've seen sort of hefeweizens look that sort of colour. Obviously the head is, is dissipating. Now if you sort of swirl this around, you can reinvigorate that head because of the amount of carbo carbonation. But as you're doing this, you're killing the carbonation in the beer. Now, if you like the sort of flavours, if you like to savour the flavour, you want to keep that carbonation because when you get it in the mouth, that will push it around the mouth. But if you want to drink it through a head, you've got to sort of swirl it around like that but as you're doing that all the carbonation or the CO2 is rising to the top that really is nice and you know what I'm not trying I'm not blowing my own trumpet here but I've got that just at the right temperature you don't want to drink this cold you want to drink it sort of cellar temperature just bordering on chilled and you'll get all them flavours. If you drink this cold, you're gonna kill a hell of a lot of the flavours. And this is all about the flavour. It's not a chugger. It's not about, you know, how much you can get down your neck. This is one to savour. You know, you should be taking this very, very slowly indeed, because it's 10%, you've got to give it some respect. But the flavours as well, they're there to be, you know, really savoured and, and, you know, it's not about, as I say, it's not about how much you can throw down your neck. This is just about, purely about the flavour. And this is a really nice one. So just to recap on the flavours. First thing that will hit you is the ethanol. That's running all the way through it. Then you get a mixture of sweetness and caramel malt and then everything just mingles together and so you're getting sweetness and you're getting spirit alcohol it can taste quite treacly almost like molasses that's the sort of flavor i get from the doubles and the the quads the decent belgian quads and that's what i'm getting in this one and then on the finish you've got a little bit of spice that i think that's coming or a little bit of bitterness that comes from the hops but this is all about the the big malt the big spirit alcohol and the sweetness that, that sticks to your sticks to your palate this is a really really good quad so what's the verdict on la trap yeah 
they've not let the side down. They really have got the range of beers. Now, I've made this comparison a few times with craft brewers who will just fucking pump out different batches of beer, you know, at a rate of knots. If you look at some of the, um, what's the, is it rate beer? Brewdog, for example, you look at their list of beers and it goes on for pages and pages. This lot, I think they do five or six beers. That's all they do. There's other Trappist brewers who only do three or four, maybe. They do a, a blonde, a double, a triple, and a quad, and maybe some other specialty beer. So maximum five, and their beers are well-renowned. Westmel, Westmel, for example, they may do others, but the two that they're renowned for are the doubles and triples. And there's an old saying, the more you know, the less you need to show. And I think that's right, if you if you get it right first time. For me, I, I, know I probably shouldn't be comparing craft brewers to, you know, old Trappist Belgian brewers, like, you know, but it, it to me it seems like they, they're looking for something, the holy grail that they will never settle on. And don't be wrong, you know, as I say, I'm always for experimentation. Certain Belgian brewers have rejected all that and La Trap, I know they're from the Netherlands, but they've, for all intents and purposes, they sh really should be Belgian because they're just brewing a Belgian style beer. They really have got it spot on. They just get things right. And this stuff is really, really good. I will definitely recommend this. I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. And the reason I'm not gonna give it a 10 out of 10 is because there's better quadruples out there. And I recently tried the Bravent Apostle. So far, that's one of the best I've tried. But there's other quads out there as well. And, you know, if you get a bad one that's just so full, full of alcohol or so full of glucose syrup or candy sugar, it's really not going to taste nice. You really have to get the balance right. And they've got it spot on. But there is better out there, in my opinion. But that is really good. That is not bad. If you see some of this, get it. And if you love your Belgian quads, then you probably tried this anyway if you do, but of course, this is really nice. I recommend this. Nine out of 10, get some. And remember, beer is working class champagne.